He's easy to read. Uh, I guess subtitled Journey Out of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, read this. It is a good read. It is an interesting read, not only, uh, as Debbie was telling us before the break, uh, uh, molested as a child within the organization of Jehovah's Witness uh, Witnesses, and, and disfellowshipped. Is that the correct word? Did I have it right? That's correct. Explain disfellowshipping again. They, they, they kicked you out? Well, the, uh, they form when they find out that you may be guilty of something they consider a wrongdoing. And sometimes it's an admission, sometimes it's not. They, they find out somehow. Somebody reports you for something. And they form what's called a judicial committee. Uh, it's usually four or five brothers. They ask to meet with you, they call you in, and they interview you. And if they deem you repentant of whatever that sin is, then they'll let you stay in. If they deem that you're not sorry enough for what you've done, or in my case, I intended to live this lifestyle, then they, you, they make an announcement to the congregation that you are disfellowshipped, you're not to be spoken to. That is, that, the word of that spreads like wildfire through congregations. And I had friends everywhere. Now, in some organization, uh, not organization, forgive me, but if, you know, if my friend says, well, so-and-so's done me wrong, we're not talking to her. Right. I mean, if I was 12. Right. Okay. But, uh, so that goes on for a little bit. You know, there's a couple weeks that maybe mm -hmm. I, I try to avoid so-and-so. But right. you're talking about for life and for real. For life. My mother has a nephew that's been disfellowshipped 25 years. And he worships the ground she walks on, sends cards, tries to call. She will not return his phone calls, answer the phone if his name is on the caller ID. This is a very serious, you are cut off. In fact, the latest information from Watchtower is, is that you are to treat that person as if they are already slain by God, as if God has already killed you. So, so your own family, um, if you go into a local store, and we know how, you know, we run into everybody sure. in town. It's still a small town. It's not sure. Jehovah, but it's still small. You know, you're going to run into uh, relatives at, at any of our stores anytime. Right. They don't talk to you. They don't. They just they don't look at you. Some will glance. Um, some will whisper to whoever they're with. But they'll usually. My parents, in particular, will just look away. Absolutely not. They don't even acknowledge my existence. That's that's difficult. I can't even imagine. I'll be honest. I, I have yeah. no idea how that really feels for you. I'm I'm so. Uh, I, I'm sorry that you have to go through that. Well, people worldwide have taken their life over this arrangement, this disfellowshipping arrangement. And I participated in it. When I had friends that were disfellowshipped and I was a zealot for that organization, I did what I was told. I stopped speaking to those people. And now, I just, I'm just shocked that it continues. You said that you all have a support group. Right. Or not you, yourself, but you're in a support group. We are in, there are several Facebook sites. One in particular that I've benefited from is XJW Recovery. And you get to be in touch with literally thousands worldwide. Worldwide. We have one friend in Croatia that was put out, simply not for wrongdoing, but for disagreeing with teachings of the organization, for vocally disagreeing. Now that's far different from immorality as one of the disfellowshipping offenses, homosexuality. He simply disagreed and found proof of why he and his family no longer wanted to do that. They disfellowshipped him, his family cut him off, and we need each other. Well, you said it's, it's grounds for disfellowship right. if they're even uh, reading your book. Correct. Correct. So I'm assuming any other, I'm sure you're, you're as you said in this, that the yours is not the only uh, book about Jehovah's Witnesses and people getting out of it and, and what it's about. Uh, so any of those type of, of books that are in a, not, in a favorable light, those are right. unallowed? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Strongly. You're not, to, Strongly. you're not to view it on the Internet. You're not to check out a book and read it. Anything that is not a publication of Jehovah's Witnesses, and particularly if it speaks against um, cult-like activity, you are not to be you're not to have it in your possession. In fact, they told my daughter that I had demons in my apartment at first, that I, that I was demon-possessed. And so and it scared that's her. That's hard for she a was child. 12. My goodness. <laughs> it scared her to death. Thinking about this, and, and as you said, uh, forgive me for asking again, where did you say the molestation began? The molestation began when I was first molested when I was seven, but the molestation by the elder at eight until I was 13. And to go through all that, and, and I do know as an adult that things that that are ingrained in you as a child, it's very hard to 
break free of those, even if they're not harmful. Right. They're just beliefs that you grew up with because that's what, you know, the parents told you. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and so you have overcome a lot and gotten out of this organization as well. Right. We thought about moving to a larger town where we didn't have to see them all the time, but, you know, Crystal and I do a lot for this town. We're, we don't want you to move. We're involved in this town. <laughs> we like this town. There you go. And we're, we're, this is our town too. So we're not going anywhere. You don't have to wave to me or speak to me, but we, this is our town too. You're here. Right. Do you have any more books in you? Do you think there's more coming? There's another one coming. Is it? Yes. It's fiction. Oh, really? <laughs> in fact, when I wrote this, they wanted me to write it as fiction because they were scared to put it out. They said, we want you to change your name, your, your author name. Your publishing company? Yep. Wow. We want you to uh, take out some stuff. Don't be so vocal about some things. And after hiding, I might have at one point, you know, written under a pseudonym, but there was things to be said there, and I was ready to say them. And I certainly wasn't going to use a, a fake name to say them because that took away the validity of it to me. It took away the punch behind it. You know, I just I, I wanted it. I wanted my name on it. Well, it makes me have to ask, and forgive me if it's if it is too far, but do you worry about your safety? We have. We have worried about our safety for a couple of years. It's getting a little bit better. We feared with the book. Um, there's other radio stations that are picking up this story, and national news is picking up this story, and we fear a little bit. We got. I did get one really bad comment on Facebook, uh, and it was from a Jehovah's Witness in another state, said, don't be nice to this woman. Uh, nobody, nobody be nice to this woman. Because despite the molestation, an apostate, is worse than a forgiven pedophile. And the Never ped mind me what an apostate is. I'm an apostate in that I am vocally speaking against that organization. Oh, okay. It's okay. different to be disfellowshipped and not speak out against them. Because usually there's people that get disfellowshipped. You're just racking them up, aren't you? You betcha. I, usually people miss their family so bad that they start trying to get reinstated within weeks. Mm. And so there's a 6 to 12 month usually shunning process where you can go into the kingdom hall, sit on the back row, don't try to speak to anybody, and that's supposed to prove your repentance. And they don't speak to you. Correct. You, 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 but you are allowed to sit in the You can meetings. attend, but you're not allowed to speak. Yeah. All right, one more time before we have to go. Tell them how they can get hold of the book, Out With Consequences, from Debbie McDaniel. You can pick it up on Amazon.com. You can get it at Legends. Ask for Crystal if you go in. She has some books there. And then Kindle. Kindle's an easy and inexpensive way to read it. It's true. Very yeah. good. Very good. Uh, Debbie, thank you very much. Thank you Thanks for having me. Thanks for being me. on the show. And glad you good are. Good to see you. You know, making the circuit and talking about this. This is, this is, this is real. Yeah. Get hold of the book, folks. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. All right, we got Trey.